Well, for a long time, songs played in major chords have been linked to happiness, while songs played in minor have been linked to sadness. But a new study has shown not everyone is singing from the same song sheet. Here's Leighton Haeckel. There's something about happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. That just makes you feel, well, happy. Make it like a but it's not just the lyrics. We've long associated happy music with major keys and sad music with minor keys. But a new study shows that's only true if you grew up surrounded by music that follows the basic rules of Western theory. I don't think there's any necessary correlation. It's just, uh, I think it's just a, a convention that we've latched onto for a, a long, long time. The study tested different music on people in Papua New Guinea where people were mostly exposed to their own traditional music and it showed they don't associate chord progressions with moods the way Western music does. Whether that's due to the brain processing sounds differently or cultural association, it's long stumped researchers. Well, I very much think that how you were raised and the culture you were brought up in is, is most important in the way you uh, appreciate music. We thought we'd put Kiwis to the test, first with a song in minor. It already sounds sad. Ah, oh, sad. It's not a sad song, but more that it makes you want to think about life. Sleepy. Contemplative. <laughs> Feel kind of tired. <laughs> and what about one in a major key? I feel... I feel... Ready. <laughs> I feel like that makes me happy. Happy song. It's, it's a happy birthday song. It's got to be a happy song. Yeah, that's happy. Major or minor, happy or sad, it's proof of the influence music has on our emotions and lives. Clayton Haeckel, you sub. For more on this, let's bring in Aline Adrian Smith, who is one of the authors of this study. Hi, Aline. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, it feels like musical interpretation is just a given. So what made you want to look deeper into this? Um, yeah, so um, my background originally is as a classical trained pianist. So music has always been a big part of my life. But interestingly, even also for people who do not play an instrument, music is an important part of their lives as well. So, um, and when you compare your um, musical interests with your friends, you find that there's quite a few similarities that you would find particular songs happy and other songs are sad, but you also have some differences in, in what types of music you would like and, and they would like. So I'm particularly interested in, in the emotional responses to, to music and which uh, aspects of that might possibly also um, occur between cultures, because we also find that there's quite some similarities between cultures on what kind of music is happy or sad, but also uh, differences. So yeah, our research focuses on um, which aspects of that might be even universal and are shared between cultures and what aspects are culturally learned. So to test that, that sort of theory, was it hard to find communities that hadn't been exposed to Western music? Um, well, it is increasingly hard to find, of course. Um, but this part was, or this study was part of, of my PhD, and my PhD originally um, was not planning to, to look at this. Um, or to go to, to this uh, community. But we were very lucky that we met with uh, one of the co-authors, Dr. Hannah Savassi, who, was, uh, who is a linguist and uh, an adopted community member in, in the community we went to. And she uh, has done some research there already. And she was planning a research trip to go there. And she kindly invited us to come along and do a music study. And this fit perfectly with uh, what I was doing for my PhD. So it was just... A um, very, very good uh, coincidence and, and very, um, yeah, a great opportunity for us to go there. OK, so how does our brain actually figure out what sounds make us happy or sad? What we currently think is that there's three possible, three possible things that might happen. There might be something in sound itself that could cause us to have a specific emotional response. And um, this could, for example, be um, some acoustic components or multiple acoustic components, such as um, the sound waves being very close together and clashing, and that could, uh, for example, cause an unpleasant uh, experience in the brains, familiarity. The more exposed you are to something, the more pleasant you might find it. So um, if you consistently hear major chords, which in most of music major chords are more prevalent than minor chords, we might find them more pleasant than minor chords simply because they occur more often. 
And then the, the last explanation we have is related to associative conditioning. So this is also a psychological phenomenon where you consistently pair happy events with a particular music, for example. And by this consistent pairing, we start to find the music happy as well, even though it might not intrinsically be happy itself. Yeah, no, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. Hey, Elaine, thanks yeah. very much for your time tonight.